In this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I'm gonna uproot a city because baby, when you do that, you get some resources. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today we're smashing a city mostly to see how does it even work, what happens, and can we get some resources out of the deal? I'm pretty sure that you can. So, this player is not in a fellowship, so I'm pretty sure they're not playing the game anymore. You're, if you're not in a fellowship, you're not playing the game. Or you're between fellowships, but I've been watching them, they're, they're not playing. 14,775 ring power per hour. Now I know some number of players are going to be like, you're so mean attacking another player's city. But like everybody, this is a war game and this player has most likely quit the game because they're not even in a fellowship and they haven't been for more than 24 hours, okay? So now that we've got that out of the way, all right, let's actually hit this thing and see how it goes. I'm going to send Gimli, who is my second strongest commander, to punch this thing real good. And I am pretty sure that the sequence of things that's going to happen here as, is as follows. First of all, we're going to have to defeat the defending armies. Gimli should be able to get it done. I've got Aragorn here, a second army, if needed. Then, we're going to have to siege this thing and take out its durability to zero. Now, if I show you my settlement real quick, you can see that I have over 1.1 million durability here. So, it's going to take a lot of hits, but the reason mine is so high and what you would do if you wanted to better protect your city is you would go into your buildings and you'd be working on your battlements, which increases your city durability limit and also your defensive capabilities. A bowman tower does damage to enemies that are hitting your city, at least while you've got some troops left to defend it. So let's find out what happens when I hit this thing in just a couple seconds. Worst case, again, I send Aragorn to go help out. I've got a lot of high-powered, uh, well, I've got a couple high-power marches nearby, right? So I can manage myself, protect myself a little bit here as I go through this endeavor. And here we go. The city hit. What's about to happen? How bad is this going to be? I'm in war. Will I go to a tie? No. We just conquered it. And how much defenses did they have? Absolutely nothing. What a joke. You know where their defenses are? <laughs> right here in this fort next to their city. Don't do that, people. You don't want to do that, and that's why now I can really crush this thing. I've got a dude nearby who's a siege specialist. I brought another one nearby because I thought this would be harder than it was. My one hit from Gimli absolutely crushed this thing. Yeah, this guy's in big trouble. This guy is in big trouble. And will his troops that are in this fort disappear? I don't know. I might just hit them to clear them off the map. I might just leave them because they're irrelevant. I'm honestly not sure what to do with it. I guess I, I mean, we'll see what happens to his forts. Do they, when you get uprooted, do they go away? What happens to the armies that are in the field? Do they get sent home? Like, I'm I'm very intrigued to see, like, what happens in all these situations. So, um, Hurgon, is that how you pronounce his name? Is, is going to hit this thing in just a second. When that happens, we'll take eh, a little more of the durability off of it. Then I'll send Haldir to get a hit as well. That way we're not kind of waiting. Because I think it's going to take a couple hits. Maybe, maybe one more after this dude hits. All right, so... Haldir takes a crack. There we go. Durability. Good hit. 95,000 damage dealt. No defenses. Uh, dude, I bet you that if I had been a little more patient and done this with uh, Hergon, I could probably have finished the durability. And I bet you Haldir is going to fall just short. A little bit of a waste of energy here, possibly. Let's find out. If this ends up at like 1% or 2%. But you know what? Like, it's a tiny amount of stamina in the grand scheme of things. It kind of doesn't matter. So this is all fine. We'll take our crack at this thing in a second and find out. Here we go. We'll connect with this thing. And I should have enough resources in my storehouse for whatever this dude has saved up. And, like, food is the resource I need so desperately. I am mostly just trading stone into food at this point. Um, and I feel really good that I have a high-level market to do that with. Card up in the top where I talk about how to use the market for great profit, all right? So here we go. Haldir is about to connect with this city. Now, when this city is uprooted, these tiles all become available underneath the city for other players to capture, and the city is just going to disappear. Where does it go to? I don't actually know. Oh, my God, I knew it. Oh, 8%. All right, I don't feel too bad about that, but I probably could have got it done just like this. 
Um, I should send Haldir again, but for the sake of the speed in this video, you know, both for recording and watching later, I'm just going to send Hergon again, get the job done. This thing is going to get uprooted. My storehouse is going to fill with resources, hopefully. I mean, this cost me zero troops to do. It did cost me some energy, but like, would I spend energy for resources? Obviously, I would spend ability points and stamina for resources because I do that already when I'm gathering from a tile, right? So is this worth the 20, 40, 60, 80? Did I spend 80 stamina to do this? <laughs> let's, let's see how many resources I get and then we can be the judge together, okay? So here we go. Uproot incoming, baby. Here it is. And boom. That's like no resources, but... Okay, in fairness, it's not no resources. If I had gathered three times, or, or yeah, if I had gathered three times, I would have got this many resources, uh, maybe four times, but like, not a terrible use of stamina. Not a terrible use of stamina, and now they're gone. And all their troops are gone. That's interesting, but their fort is still here. So if I wanted to kill their troops, which I don't know why I would, it looks like they quit, right? So I could have killed their troops, but that's basically just costing me troops for, I guess, experience, but no true value. I mean, now I can take out their fort, and if they ever came back, they're not coming back to this area, right? Um, also, it clears up the tile. So I'm good with taking out forts. I, dude, forts are how people get around the map, so I think it's kind of important to take those out. And if you don't know how forts work, check the card up in the top. I've got a detailed video explaining everything you need to know for fort basics all right and how to how to place them where to place them how to delete them and so on if you enjoyed this video throw a like on here consider subscribing if there's anything else i need to know about uprooting a city that a viewer would need to know please leave that down below in the comments we're all learning this game together and until next time you have fun smashing your enemies